Hi, in this video I'm going to be showing you one approach to taking an exploded view photograph of an existing product. In this case, we're using a 12 volt USB charger. So the first thing we need to do is to separate it out into its individual parts. So pop it open and you'll see we've got a base, PCB, top cover, a washer and an end cap that rotates on. The basic setup for this is pretty simple. I've just got a piece of white paper uh, bending up the wall to give me a high contrast background against the parts. I'm going to use an app on my phone called Repro. I found this one a few years ago. It does what's called onion skinning. Onion skinning allows you to overlay a semi-transparent image so that it helps you align the next photographs you're going to take. Begin with the top and base, positioning them so that they align vertically. We'll then be wanting the washer and end cap positioned over on the left of the frame, so make sure to leave space for all of the parts to make it easier. Then take the first photo. You can now see the transparent image, or onion skin, being overlaid. It helps us to align each new photo. Starting with the base, align the camera so that the new picture aligns as closely as possible to the original, then progress onto the other parts. The PCB is next. The contacts are not resting in the correct way, so to fix this I've just used a piece of white Lego to hold it in place, and it can be photoshopped out later. Align the PCB so that it is an appropriate size and orientation, and frame it between the base and top so that the perspective is as close as possible, limiting our work in Photoshop later on. Repeat with the top, and then we'll add in the washer and end cap. The washer needs some support, so I'll use the piece of Lego again. It's harder to guess exactly where to frame these parts. You could swap the background picture out with one of the PCB to align it directly with, the, with that image instead, or just approximate it and then adjust the position in Photoshop. Take the final picture of the end cap and then copy the photos onto your computer and move into Photoshop. So here I've got the original image as well as each of the uh, components or parts that make up this product. So next step, I'm going to select all and copy the base create a new document and base it on the clipboard and paste in that first image. Now do the same with each other part, paste it in over the top. Now we've got all of the images in the one file. We can go through and using whatever selection method you find most appropriate, whether it's the magnetic tool uh, lasso or quick select. Select the object and create a mask. Turn that one off. So select the next layer down. Select our object. Create the mask. So here I'm just being very quick. Get the rough shape and I'll come in with the brush tool a little later and tidy it up. We've now got each of these layers masked. You'll see I need to reposition a couple of them. We'll move that layer down so that it's in line and depends how you want to do this. You could have objects overlapping, uh, but if you're going to do that, set it up that way in the initial photography so that all the perspectives remain appropriate. You may also need to resize some of the parts a little bit, depending on how your photography was. So having done this now, you can go through the process of touching up each part. So this one I need to clean up the area in here a bit. 
switch over to the mask layer using the black and white colors. So black will remove and white will keep it. Do a quick selection as well. And if you're doing quick selection, X to swap the colors and then you can delete a selection to the color of the background or we'll switch it back again to do some manual painting. So brush, Just give it a nice crisp edge. And the same goes with each of the other parts as needed. So there's a very quick rough job at cleaning it up. Obviously the more time you put into it the better results you can get and using either different selection tools and painting over or using paths to properly deep etch these images will give you better results as well. Having completed this you can now save it, uh, export it to another program such as Illustrator where using vectors you can add construction lines or leaders, as well as text. Another quick touch up you can do is to add a curves layer and apply this across all of the layers below it. So you can brighten up uh, the image depending on how your initial photo has turned out. Uh, make it a bit darker or other adjustments. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching.